Welcome back. We all know the story of the Horton Flying Wing, the HO229. Its tailless design is often seen as the precursor of the Northrop Flying Wing and even the B2 stealth bomber. But that's not why you are here today, because I like to look at the big picture. And that led me to ask this big question. Whatever happened to Walter and Reimer Horton after World War II? Good question. And today I can tell you some secrets from history. How the Horton brothers' flying wing concept carried on, flying was Rolls-Royce jet engines, how Reimer Horton went on to design a Mach 2.2 fighter jet for Argentina. And in the sad end, the only practical use of this amazing flying wing concept was to transport vegetables in a cargo variant in South America. So welcome to this channel where I look at the big picture for you. Reimer Horten was born in Bonn, Germany on March the 12th, 1915. He entered into aeronautics thanks to his brother, Walter, who was 28 months older than Reimer. In Germany, after World War I, Military aviation was banned thanks to the Treaty of Versailles. But the Germans were allowed to play and built gliders. The Horton brothers were obsessed with a tailless aircraft and built this, one of the first flying wing aircraft, a glider. But it was all a ruse. Actually, the Nazis were developing the Luftwaffe and Hermann Göring started a competition called 3K. K, or 1001, was a thousand kilometre range. K2 was to carry a thousand kilogram load. And K3 is one of my favourite stories. K3 was to fly at a thousand kilometres an hour. It's about 600 miles an hour. It's faster than the speed of sound at sea level, but it's not a thousand miles an hour. And if you remember my film about Britain almost breaking the sound barrier, you will know that the three Ks were wrongly translated. And the third K of a thousand kilometers an hour was badly translated as a thousand miles an hour. And a thousand mile an hour plane was what Frank Whittle was told to build engines for. And he did. The Horton Flying Wing easily met the three Ks. In fact, its range was 1900 kilometers, well over the 1000 set by the Nazi High Command. Anywho, back to the Who Hortons. What did they do after World War II, Simon? Well, many Germans went to the United States, Operation Paperclip. A few under the Tissard Commission came to Great Britain. A quite a number volunteered to go to the Soviet Union, Russia. The Nazi war machine of scientists and engineers were split up. So yes, you in the back. The Hortons obviously went to the United States. Oh no, they didn't. Volta and Reimar moved to Argentina. They were warmly welcomed by Argentina to develop advanced aircraft. And that's exactly what they did, kind of. Volta Horton moved back to Germany, but Reimer Horton stayed and built some amazing aircraft using Rolls-Royce jet engines. The Argentinians loved Reimer Horton and asked him to build a Mach 2.2 flying wing fighter jet. This was the IA-48, equipped with Rolls-Royce Avon RA-3 engines with 2,000 950 kilograms of push. It was such an innovative design, it was claimed it could reach Mach 2.2. But the Argentine military 
meddled in it. They wanted an aircraft that could take off and land on an aircraft carrier. The Horton IA-48 just couldn't do that. And eventually that project was cancelled. And that's how Argentina missed out on becoming one of the first nations to have a supersonic jet aircraft. Mm. But in a strange twist of fate, Argentina still wanted a flying wing. But this time, not for the military. Engineer Reimer Horton presented this prototype to the Argentine government. It was a Tetra motor flying wing transport. Finally, the first flight of this transport flying wing took place in 1960. It was a high wing monoplane, semi-monocoque. Of course, it didn't have a tail and the rudders were located in the wing tips. The cockpit was a two seat tandem arrangement and the cargo hold was very large, had a capacity of 23 cubic meters and could carry over six tons of cargo from Argentina to the rest of South America. It even had a crocodile or a clamshell opening door at the back, which was a modern innovation. With a wingspan of 32 meters, 13.5 meters long, a cruising speed of 215 kilometers an hour, and a range of 12,050 kilometers. So now you know the big picture. The Horton brothers, after World War II, moved to Argentina. Reimer Horton stayed and built Argentina's first flying wing cargo aircraft. Do you enjoy knowing the big picture behind secret hidden histories? I do. So stick around, subscribe, give this film a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and come and join a fantastic crew of Inquiring Minds on Patreon because the truth is out there.